It should be in good shape. You see that pretty flag, Hank, blowing out there? Yeah, I did. It's nice. Oh, it was a big one. That was a big one. <laughs> I appreciate you doing that, Martha. That flag was given to me. Was it? Yeah. Uh -huh. I didn't have to pay for it. Oh, boy. Yes, uh, Tim and his son worked uh, sprinkles up on East Market. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my brother-in-law, Tommy Tannen, mm -hmm. he still goes over there. He takes his own oil with him. I think he's got a special oil he uses, but yeah. uh, they change it for him and everything. Mm. They put a fence up down there across that track, didn't they? I think so. Yeah, I believe they did. That was our main route. Well, they had one all along, but at the bottom of it, it was they kept going under, under, under. Yeah, wear it, wear it down. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was one of those. <laughs> uh oh. I was one of those that wandered across the tracks every day to go to school and every day to come home from school. Now, when I was growing up, we walked to school. Until yeah. Grade. You both. No, I think what's up there. I'm not mistaken. Uh, Richard sometimes puts them up there. Let's see. I think it's one of there. Yeah. <laughs> he puts one up there for you. Yeah. All right. You know, last year, Tim had a hip replacement. Oh, I didn't know that, did he? Yeah. Goodness. I think both of them need too. Oh, man. Man. Yeah. Hey, boy, he was a good ball player. He couldn't hardly walk. I saw him. I played ball against him. Oh, Northeast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I played with Landon Charles for the best. I don't know why that kept coming down, but I didn't know he was Well, I threw him all kinds of junk. He was good, <laughs> <idiot. laughs> Ball, curveball, screwball, you name it. Fastball, slowball. He was just a good little hitter. Yeah. Have you heard from Randy and Shirley? How, how's Randy? He's doing good. That's good. Doing real good. Are they going to be here today? Now that I'm not sure of. She said that they were just taking it day by day. But he was doing a whole lot better. That's great. Yeah. That's a pretty flower pot. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is. I think that's... I don't think it... Who bought that one? Somebody bought it? I believe the hand did. Mm -hmm. It's artificial. Bird? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a nice one. we got several back there that's pretty. Yeah, we do. There's one back there that's got red, white, and blue on it. Mm -hmm. Flag. Oh. Good morning. Where are you? Hey, sir. How are you working with? I'm working all right. I just had a good week. Pretty good. I see they got the yard done. Oh, yeah. They cried wolf Friday. Got a good job out there. We did. They were the right. next one. Who was out there this week? Pretty all right. I imagine it was late. It rained some, but at the end of the day, it was something to watch. Yeah. It was a house to do. I don't know how many we got. I don't know how it rained during the day, but all right. I do 
you do again? She's 
not done, I'll take you very well. And she was going to sit there so long. I told her. One time later, one time later. It's kind of fair and I'm not. Well, I don't remember mine and mine, but it's not out of the way. It's a censor in this one. Every one of them is dead on the side of the car. But the censor shows censor. I've got one back in there. So it was a censor out of the way. I don't know that. I don't know what place to call it. I don't think we're too old. Yeah, it's in the same way. I'm talking about $10,000 and $15,000. But yeah, they sit there so long, so they start going back on it. Yeah. Yeah. My man, I'm going to drive that over once in a while because it comes to the car at all. And that's not good for them. It's as, it's as bad as running out of the house. It's the worst car I've ever had. I inherited from my mother. What ran in, ran in the house. 75 Ford.
pastor for 40. That's what he did in church. He pastored for 49 years. I need support for anybody to come in that he's only had for one day. It's been a But he's done well. He's been there a long time. I got a call. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I know he's, yeah, he's had a trouble breathing right in the fall. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Gary. You're welcome. Uh, you're still sweating. I cheered him out.
Amen. 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 Even though sometimes we don't realize it, he's always taking care of us. Amen. Morning, noon, and night. Anybody with a special request real quickly here as we get started. Yes, ma'am. I just want to say thank you all for praying for my brother. Uh, he had his um, outfit where they had to put him to sleep to uh, shock his heart. Right. So he's doing good. He called me this morning again just to say thank y'all. And he gave me a little encouragement this morning myself. Um, I'm going through some things right now. Right. And I told him I was trying to get ready for church, but I didn't know if I was going because that God old devil was trying to keep me from going. He said, sis, I'm telling you right now, <laughs> go to church. Don't let that devil mess with you. He said, now, you're going to have a good day if I go to church. Hey. And I told him, I said, okay, I want you to remember those words. <laughs> but thank y'all for prayer. I'm so glad that he's doing well. Yes. Yes. I think so. Yes, that's wonderful. Anybody else would want to look with me? Okay, Carol. Well, just pray for me and Bob. We're going to leave Friday and go to West Virginia for the weekend. Okay. We'll be praying to have good traveling mercies. Everybody up there. Okay. We'll surely keep you in our prayers. Anybody else? Anybody else today? Yes, Randy, it's so good to see you back, buddy. Yeah. I just wanted to thank everybody for the cards, <coughs> uh, the forestry that I got in there. Uh, everything else has been, it's been a real encouragement. Amen. 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 Well, this is encouraging to just see you here today. Amen. 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 Good. Okay. Uh, thank you, had somebody. Yeah, I got several on my heart. Continue to remember Linda. She got up and thought she was coming until she got ready and then she was wore out. But she planned on coming tonight. So continue to pray for her. We go back for her follow up on Thursday. Hopefully, she'll get some release and get that big thing off her neck and be able to get around. But uh, on my heart this morning, I've got two preachers, two dear friends of mine that are uh, both facing cancer problems Brother David Harrison. Up around Kingsport, Tennessee, is in pretty rough shape. Um, and then uh, talked to Sister Sharon Barney this morning, Brother Chris Barney's pastor at Belfry up there, and uh, his cancer is starting to spread. And he's in bad shape this morning. Aww. We can't, uh, in the Christian army, it's bad enough when we lose the leadership, but uh, when we start losing the leaders, yeah. it, it, it affects. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, be sure to lift him up this morning. He's down. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we sure will. And I came here to leave this morning, so forgive me if I don't want to. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Wanda? Um, so, Pauline is online. She said good morning, Grace Baptist. And she said, God bless y'all, and I'll thank you for praying. God bless you, Pauline. She's, you know, she's, she's watching us on the video. Yeah, she knows she can't come. She's Pauline and Lewis Taylor. Yeah. They did. So glad to see them there. Tune them. Yeah. Yes. We'll keep our prayers up for them, too. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Anybody have this, yes, Shirley? Update on my brother-in-law, Ron Morgan. Uh-huh. He had his surgery last week. He uh-huh. has a bend of the knee. <laughs> and, oh, great. He is, and he is back home. As long as we're just praying that he learns the hard, I went up, the easy way, how to listen to his doctor and do as he's told. Yeah. <laughs> Learn the easy <laughs> way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. Well, I'm glad he's got a bendable knee now. That makes a big difference. I can remember when mine wouldn't be in. And, uh, boy, I thought I was in for, you know, being Chester on gun smoke the rest of my life. It's going to be a straight leg, and I'll never get it, never get it bent. But anyway, we did get it bent. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Yes. Well, Okay. I had to talk to Mom this morning, 
don't know what that yeah. means. She said she's still coming out. She's still coming out. So just continue to pray. <laughs> Amen. Flora and Charlie. Yes. All right. Let's keep them in our prayers. Travel and mercies, everything goes away. All right. her heart. We'll tell her our prayers are with her. Keep God in our prayers. Jerry? Just remember Shirley and I and our family. Okay. The Lord knows all the needs. Okay, we got that. Yes, baby? Uh, just keep Deborah in your prayers. Okay. She's going through a hard time. Alright, let's keep Deborah in our prayers as well. We bless both of them heart. We thank the world of them and love them and love all of us. Today and uh, we we'll keep these in our prayer. Ah, Deborah, okay. Anybody else have one? Anybody else have one? Okay. Let's see. Linda, you want to read yours there for us? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. We need to continue praying for the lost souls and for all the sick folks in around the world. Right. Uh, pray for our country, our leaders, the military, and all first responders. Continue praying for Israel. Yes. And all of our missionaries around the world. And praise the Lord for Mike Cardwell that he had good results from his shock last week. <laughs> Chris Coben uh, is home, but he still needs a lot of prayers. Uh, Bill Coble has, has had respiratory issues now for about two and a half weeks, and he's got a severe cough. So can pray, pray for him. Okay. And by the Lord, that Randy's able to come in today. Amen. Him and uh, Shirley. Uh, Betty Wine said, Helen's sister fell at the nursing home last week, and she had to have uh, a stroke or hip. She had to have surgery on Friday, and she wasn't doing well on Friday night. Okay. And Helen's, Helen hadn't been able to get in touch with her. She's lost her phone or something happened to it, and so she hasn't heard from her since Friday. Okay. Um, we did those two. And unspoken prayers for all of them, again, and the Sizemore family. Okay. And pray that Linda Trout will get more strength and be able to come and be with us. Amen. And hopefully she'll get get some uh, good news when she goes for her follow-up. Yes. And Anna Lou Trout is doing better. They're going back to some of the old treatments for wounds, and she's doing a little better. Okay. Pray for Bobby and Jackie. Yes. Um, and for all of Anita's family and, and her son. Pray for the, the Sizemore family. Gloria had the flu and has had a leg and hip pain. And she's back today. Thank the Lord. Uh, but continue praying for her. She hasn't heard anything on her hip and leg. She has a call in and is waiting. Okay. Today at 5 o'clock, we will have a meeting for the people that uh, will be interested in helping with the Easter breakfast. Right. You'll be here in the back uh, about 5 o'clock. We'll get this going. Okay. Our sunrise service will be at 8.30 on the 31st, which is this Sunday. Next week for the day. Uh, and then breakfast will follow the, the service. And then our regular worship service, Easter service, will be at 10 a.m. Right. J.J. Johnny Jordan, Jordan, J O Y N E R, 16 year old boy, pray for him and his family. The Lord knows his needs. Joanne Weber went to see her cancer doctor for follow up on breast cancer, and they've now diagnosed her with osteoporosis. And they want to give her some kind of infusion every six months. But there's so many side effects on it. So, Lord, guide her on what she needs to do. Amen. Pray for all of Rosalie's family, Rosalie Ring's family, and all of Lee. Okay. Pray for Chris Ring. Pray for Melissa Farlow. Her team, eight of her team, will be let go this Tuesday. Okay. And they have called them in, or they're going to do it on a a Zoom call 
but they've invited these people to be on that call for a sign, and she doesn't know if she's going to have to drop the axe or if somebody else will do it, but pray that she doesn't have to. Yes. Pray for Kyle and Jason Stevens and their family. Yes. And Autumn Gaden doesn't have any water today. Something's wrong with her pump, and somebody's coming to see about it today. So pray that this will be a quick fix and that they will soon be able to get water. Yes. Pray, continue praying for Dennis McArthur. His cancer has spread to his lungs. Yeah. It's in his liver and brain as well. They live in Georgia, or that's where he is now, and uh, he's been advised to go to the cancer center in Texas because they can diagnose. The folks in Georgia can only treat what the doctors have diagnosed, but okay. he can't get a, a, a date until May. So pray that there will be uh, a cancellation or something that he can get there before then. But Amen. he's still in good spirits. Amen. So pray for Ronnie and Cindy. It's so hard on the folks that are, and his wife, pray for his wife. Yes. Um, let's see. I think that's all except what we have. But Lord, we are so blessed to be in this country. We are so blessed. Just look at our people here. Amen. Thank you here that have come to worship our Lord and Savior. Yes. Amen. Thank you, now. Mm How -hmm. about unspokens today? Unspoken. Okay. Kara? Um, Bob has a test Tuesday. Bob does? Uh, a stress test. Okay. And right now he's not for sure whether he's going to do it or not because they're saying that he's going to have to have four hundred and some dollars just for the test. Good so man. Hopefully not. That he, that's what he got yesterday from one of his daughters. So we are just hoping that he don't have to. Right. Have to that, that money. Uh, that's yeah. Let's pray for that. That's terrible. And try to get some. Test made and can't yeah. hardly afford to have even the test made. <clears throat> so we'll definitely be keeping that in prayers. Okay. Uh, Charles, will you lead us in prayer before we start? Father, as we come to you this morning, we are grateful for the privilege that we have to gather in the house of God. Lord, it's a beautiful day outside, and Lord, we just thank you for that as well. We thank Amen. you for the provision that you've been made that we can be together. Yeah. Father, we invite the Holy Ghost of God to come into this service right now and take it over, be in the preaching, be in the singing. Amen. Lord, be in everything that's said and done. Lord, how allow us to worship you in truth and in spirit. Father, for those names that have been called out this morning, you know all the needs, you know Amen. all the necessities. Lord, and you even know our wants. We just pray according to your will. Father, touch those that are in need, Lord, and Lord, for those that uh, are outside, Lord, and can't get here, Lord, those that are on the video, Lord, those that are tuned into the parking lot, we're praying for them as well, but Amen. Lord, most of all, we just pray that you give us peace, Amen. to accept your will and grace in our lives, yes. strengthen us, encourage us, allow us to get out and be a witness of you, especially as we go into this holy week. Father, I just pray that you would just do all things that you can through us. Allow us to be useful servants. Touch hearts, touch homes. For it's in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Charles, for that prayer. Okay, we got a couple of announcements. Don't forget, next Sunday, uh, we will be having our Easter service, as Linda mentioned, at 830, and then the service at 10 o'clock. After we eat uh, breakfast together, we'll meet at 5 this evening with the Easter Breakfast Committee. If you'd like to help us, we could use a lot of help with that because it's a, always a lot of work to do. But it's always a good time of gravy, gravy, and more gravy. <laughs> <laughs> Bacon, gravy, biscuits, and gravy, sausage, and gravy. Amen. All right. What about egg and gravy? Yeah, egg and gravy too. Egg and gravy. Tomato. Tomato. Tomato, okay. I'm sorry. Tomato gravy, okay. We'll try it. I like tomatoes. Okay. Then we have a sign-up sheet for the mowers. If you can help mow the grass, we supply all the different equipment just once a month. You can uh, sign up in the back. And then the baptismal service is coming up. 
we had to set a date yet. We're going to get with everybody that wants to be baptized and get a date where everybody can be here and their families. And uh, we're collecting candy for the Easter egg hunt next Sunday morning. And so if you can bring some tonight, that will help. And thank you all for bringing that candy. I've checked it out. It's delicious. Ain't it? <laughs> I'm just kidding with you. I had not opened it up. But uh, been a temptation not to. Don't forget about the trip to Virginia, April the 19th at 9.30 on Friday morning. Going to go up and have a good time together. Birthdays, we'll have Emily Craven. I don't see Emily here. Anybody else with a birthday coming up? Any birthdays? How about anniversaries? Anybody celebrating anniversaries? No? Okay, men, if y'all come to the front then, we'll go ahead and receive our morning offering. How many made a contact? You did invite somebody to come with you today. If you did, hold your hand up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. Keep up the good work. Brother Jerry, you lead us if you will. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, I'd like to thank you for this another opportunity to be in your house today. Yes. As Brother Charles said, let the Holy Spirit come in and oh, take yes. hold of this service today, Lord. And Lead and guide the pastor in all things. Yes. Coming in and out of the pews, Lord, and place it in their people's hearts what they need to do, Lord. Amen. Also, if there's one here that does not know you as a personal Savior, let today be the day they come forth, Lord, and give their, give their hearts and lives to you. Lord, thank you again for all you do. We lift these prayer requests up to you. Also, let us be good stewards for this offering we're about to receive and do everything with it in the praise, honor, and glory of your name. In your name, I ask. Amen. Amen. Amen.
this song when we get to make it this morning. As we was coming up the road, the song got put on the heart. I saw all the red bud out and the trees are blooming and the sun yes. is out. Yes. yes. Here in, the, in a couple of months, it'll be marked the anniversary of Daddy's day. You know, I still ain't over that. Don't know where they will be. But when he got this time of year, he'd get the itch to be on the river back. He loved fish. Oh, yeah. And uh, this song means a lot to me. It's sort of a song in parable. You know, Jesus used parables. He'd tell an earthly story that had a heavenly meaning. So if you'll hang with me through the first verse, because you'll say, well, where is he going? The second verse will help explain that. But, uh, I'm glad that when we lose somebody to death, we really don't ever lose them. Part of them becomes part of us. Yeah, know where they're at. Yeah, we know where they're at. When we know where they're at, we have peace. And little things like red bud trees or uh, smells of a uh, rose or something like that will trigger a, a memory. Yes. And everything that they ever taught us will come back to us. So uh, pray for us as we try to sing this morning. I don't know that we'll get through it. <laughs> Why is it always seems so far? 
disciples are fearful, upset. Jesus has said he's getting ready to leave them and that he would not leave them comfort, comfortless. He would send the comforter, the Holy Spirit, to be their guide, to be their helper. But uh, he reveals something and the sermon in a sentence would be this. Uh, and we know Philip asked the question, Lord, we don't know where you're going. We don't know how to get there. And Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. But then he went on to say, show us the Father, and it satisfies us that we can see the Father. And Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Amen. And that's what the whole message is about today, the revelation of the Father through the Son Jesus Christ. So we're in John chapter number 14, starting in verse number 7. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right before our message today. Father, thank you for allowing us this privilege to be back in your house today, and for each one here, and the wonderful singing we've enjoyed, and the fellowships. So nice to be back with our family in Christ. And just to be with each one, those that are looking on by the camera, Lord, those who are looking on through the radio out in the parking lots, Lord, we just pray for every person that's tuned into this service. We ask you to speak to our hearts about who Jesus really is and what he's here for and why he came. And we'll thank you and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I heard about a young couple, they just purchased a brand new appliance for their home, so they decided to give their old refrigerator to their parents, and uh, they lived a pretty good ways off, so they shipped the refrigerator to the parents, and a few days later, the phone rang, and the mother said, honey, we want to send you a check for the refrigerator, that's a nice refrigerator, and the daughter said, no, mom, it's a gift, we wanted you to have it. And the mother said, but you could have sold it and made some money. And the daughter said, look, Mom, just consider it as repayment for all those days you took care of me when I was at home. After a slight pause, her mother said, well, in that case, it doesn't cover it. <laughs> it doesn't cover it. One refrigerator cannot cover it. All that a mother does for those children. But we're still in Friday night Next day, we know that uh, Jesus is going to be crucified. Actually, on Friday, it's Thursday, Thursday night, early Friday morning when this happened. And he's in the upper room, and it's the Last Supper. And he's explaining to his disciples that he only has one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. There's no other way. You can be baptized, you can join a church, you can be a good person, you can be in a Christian family, but that will not do it. It comes right down to what we do with Christ and being saved and knowing the Lord. They didn't quite understand what Jesus was saying, so Jesus gave them a beautiful reply on the subject, and that's what we're going to look at today, on that He is the way to heaven, He is the truth of heaven, and He is the life of heaven. That's right. We continue this interaction between the disciples and Jesus 
and how a person can know for sure they're going to heaven. Now we see it here in verse number 7. If you had known me, you should have known my father also, and from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Now, Jesus said that when you know him, you know the father. They were presently trusting the God of the Old Testament, and now it was time for them to put their trust in the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And from here on out, you're going to see the Father and the Son. Verse number 8, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. That will satisfy us if you'll just show us the Father. Now, he's asked the question on how to go to heaven, and he still has questions about it. And Jesus had already said he was the way, the truth, and the life. No man could come, no woman could come to heaven except through him. And he says, Lord, if you would just show us the Father, that will satisfy us. We'll be content. But what he doesn't realize is that when you have seen the Son, you have seen the Father manifested in physical flesh. Philip was a very quiet individual. The Bible teaches he... He never talked a whole lot. Not like Simon Peter, who would put his foot in his mouth so often. Uh, we know that Philip was a quiet man. He had a Greek name. Many Bible students believe he was a Greek. However, he could have still had a Jewish name, uh, a Greek name, and been a Jew. So we don't really know that for sure. But we do know that he brought Nathaniel to the Lord. And every time you see Philip, he's bringing people to the Lord. There was a group of people that came and said, we would see Jesus. And he said, let me show you the Father. And he brought that group of Greeks to see Jesus Christ. And so he said, I'll bring you to the Christ, the Son of the living God. So in verse number 9, Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Think about this. Jesus is the visible, tangible image of the invisible God. Amen. He is the complete revelation of what God is like. Now, he explained to Philip, who wanted to see the Father, that to know Jesus is to know the Father. That's right. And the search for God and the search for truth and the search... For reality, it ends at Jesus Christ. He is the one. Philip, you mean to tell me you've traveled with Jesus three years, day and night, and you still don't understand the way of eternal life? You've seen Jesus walk on the water. You've seen him feed the 5,000 and the 4,000. You've watched him bring Lazarus back from the dead. Why are you asking to see the Father? For if you have seen the Son, you have seen the Father. God the Father does His work through Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. And so Jesus has said that He and the Father were one, and now Philip has a problem putting all of this together and processing it. But friends, you'll never figure God out. He's a step ahead of us. Amen. All we have to do is have faith in God, Amen. belief in God, trust in God. Amen. Philip knew from the Old Testament, Moses had seen a glimpse of the glory of God on Mount Sinai. Isaiah had a vision of the Lord and the glory of the Lord. And I don't think that we should interpret Jesus' answer as a rebuke. He's just telling Philip, Philip, I perform many more miracles. Although Philip had not seen the glory of God as Moses and Isaiah did, he had seen Jesus Christ. He had witnessed his works. He had heard his words. Everything that Philip wished to see, he had seen it in Christ. And when you see it in Christ, you see it in God. Yes. Philip had a great revelation of God because he had seen God incarnate in the flesh. And he was with them at this time. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse number 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father? Don't you believe me, Philip? When I tell you I am the Father of one, do you have doubts about it? And he says, they're the words that I speak unto you. I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Now Jesus gives all the credit for what he has done to God the Father. Even though the disciples were having a hard time understanding that Jesus says the words 
that he used and the works that he performed came from his heavenly Father. And when you have seen the Son, you have seen the Father, and you have heard the Father, and you have experienced what it means to be in the presence of the Father as you are in the presence of the Son, Jesus Christ. Now, there's a lot of cults today. They get this mixed up, and they say Jesus was a mediator, or he was a good man, or he was a teacher, and some go so far as to say he was a miracle worker, but I want you to know he was much more than any of them. Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. And if somebody denies that, don't listen to them, because they missed the boat. Look at verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. We need to make that decision. Hey, I'm going to believe in Jesus Christ for what he said. He's the one that has the words of eternal life. When I put my faith and trust in what Jesus says, it's coming straight from the Father in heaven anyway. And so when I trust in his death and his burial and his resurrection, thank God, I know I'm on my way to heaven. Verily, verily, he says in verse number 12, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. Jesus says here, seriously, verily, verily, means take this serious while I'm getting ready to reveal to you. And that is that all that needed to believe on him, everyone needed to trust the works. Everyone needed to trust who they had seen in Jesus. And they would do even greater things because he was going to his Father as our great high priest in heaven. They had a hard time making up their minds, but they finally got it right. I heard about a 40-year-old eligible bachelor. He left his hometown to seek his fortune. Several months later, he returned home with some exciting news for his dad. He said, Pop, I just got married. His dad said, Man, that's great. He said, No, wasn't too great. He said, Why not? He said, Because she's ugly. (laughs) <laughs> he said, well, that's not good. He said, yeah, it's pretty good. He said, why is that? He said, because she was rich. He said, boy, that's great. He said, no, it really wouldn't do great. He said, why not? He said, she's stingy. <laughs> the father said, well, that's bad. He said, no, it's not too bad. He said, why not? Because she did build me a new house. And he said, man, that's good. And the father said, well, that is really good. And the son said, but the house burned down. And the father said, well, that's bad. He said, no, it wasn't too bad. She was in it. <laughs> Watch out there. I shouldn't have told that one, Judge. I shouldn't have told that one. But if it's not the believer doing the greater work, it's the power of God working through the believer to help him do the works that God has called him to do. Simon Peter who had denied the Lord on the night he was arrested, preached a sermon on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people came to believe in Jesus Christ because of one message from one man who denied the Lord three times. I think of the men over the years who have invested their lives and the women over the years who have invested their lives into serving Jesus Christ. I think about everywhere we go, whether we're a missionary or a missionary across the street from somebody, everywhere we go is big league business, friends. We're telling people about Jesus. We're telling people that he is the way. He is the truth. He is the light. No man can come to the Father but by Jesus Christ. And so we think about this in verse number 13. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, this will I do, that my Father may be glorified in the Son. Now when we pray, we pray in Jesus' name. That does not mean that we get anything that we want. We're to pray according to the will of God when we pray in Jesus' name. That's what makes the difference in the prayer life of a believer. He can answer in one of three ways. Yes, no, wait. One of those three ways is the way he answers. Now when he says yes, he'll answer right then. When he says no, the reason he says no is because he knows what we're asking is not the best for us. But then when he says wait, he's saying you're not quite ready for it yet, but I'm going to do it for you in the proper time. So Jesus is not saying the disciples 
would do more amazing miracles. I mean, after all, raising the dead, that's about as amazing as you can get. But really what he's talking about, they're going to be working in the power of the Holy Spirit of God, and they're going to take the gospel to the whole world through the power of Jesus. Verse number 14. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's a great prayer promise there, friend. Ask in Jesus' name and God will do it. When, you're, when you ask to be saved, what does he do? He washes your sins as white as snow. When you have a burden or a need, he is only a call away. When you're confronted by Satan's temptation, look for the way of escape. And he'll have a way for you to get out of that temptation. When you pray in Jesus' name, you're praying in the greatest authority in all the universe for the greatest work in all the world, and therefore he will answer your prayers. Why is that? Because with God, nothing shall be impossible. What is it that hangs you down this morning? What is it that hangs you upset this morning? Whatever it is, it's not too hard for God. We've seen God do miracle after miracle after miracle, and he'll do more miracles than we can imagine. It. When Jesus said to ask for anything, remember he's saying, ask according to my name or according to my desires. Whatever God wants is what we need to want. And so he continues right on to say the greater things are the result of prayer. Prayer evangelism is needed so much today to keep praying for our brothers, keep praying for our sisters, keep praying for the lost. And when you pray, something supernatural happens in heaven. God reaches down and touches that person in a miraculous way. Prayer gets the mind and heart of God on the situation. Then he says in verse number 15, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now he's going a step further. Not only pray in the name of Jesus according to the will of God, but pray loving God, keeping the commands of God. Now he moves from loving one another to keeping the commands of God for each person. If you really love him, you want to keep his commandments. If you really love the Lord, then you should only obey the commandments of the Lord and he will send you the comforter and he'll be with you throughout all the ages of the universe. And that comforter is none other than the Holy Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit of God comes down to live in your heart. And he never forsakes you. He never leaves you. Thank God your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He's with you. Every step of the way. Verse number 16. And I'll pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. This other comforter is talking there about the Holy Spirit. He brings comfort. He brings strength. The word counselor, the comforter, carries the idea of a counselor. It combines the idea to comfort and to counsel us. So the Holy Spirit is a powerful being that is indwelling our bodies right now. And he tells us what to do and how to do it. And he tells us when to stop. And have a stop. Whatever he wants us to do, he lets us know. The priestly intercessory work of Christ began with the request of the Father sending the Holy Spirit to indwell the people of God. Verse number 17. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, and ye dwell in him, and he shall be in you. Think about the world of the lost. They don't know the Holy Spirit. They don't know anything about the work of a comforter, a counselor, somebody who lives inside of them. But when you get saved, thank God, a great transaction takes place. Not only does he record your name in the Lamb's book of life, but he gives you the Holy Spirit of God without you even knowing it. And yet when you go out, You'll know when you have the Holy Spirit's leadership. He'll tell you, don't mess with that. He'll say, tell that person about Jesus. He'll say, get up and go and tell somebody about the Lord. He'll say, read your Bible. He'll say, pray today. And when he is giving you these commands, that's the Spirit trying to edge you on and encourage you to live for Jesus Christ. Yes, Sometimes I have found he'll warn you. He'll say, stay away from that person. Stay away from that situation. Don't get involved in that location. 
He says, stay back. Because something's just not right. That's the Holy Spirit also. Yes. He does it both ways. The Spirit of truth, they cannot receive. But we receive Him. The world cannot know Him because they don't understand the work of the Holy Spirit of God. The Comforter is the Holy Spirit. He brings truth to the world. The world does not receive Him. But thank God when we receive Jesus Christ, we also receive the Holy Spirit of God. Woo, that's about enough to make a baby shout. Amen. Amen. You have the Holy Spirit. He's with you. And he'll never leave you. One day a teacher was talking to the first grade class about whales. A little girl had a question. She said, do whales swallow people? And the teacher said, no, they're not. They're bigger than people, but their, their little cleats filter out their food and their creel, and they can never swallow a person. And the little girl said, well, my Sunday school teacher said that Jonah was swallowed by a whale. <laughs> and the teacher started getting a little angry and said, blue whales cannot swallow anybody, little girl. And she said, well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Jonah if he was really swallowed by a whale. <laughs> and the teacher said, red with anger, what if Jonah went to hell? She said, then you can ask him. <laughs> Watch out. I'm getting mad. He didn't plumb me on some of these jokes. Huh? I heard about an atheist here who came to the Lord and he was a scientist and he said, God, we don't need you anymore. We figured out how to make a man without you. The Lord said, oh, that's unusual. Let's see you do it. And so about that time, the atheist bent down and he grabbed some of the dirt, scooped up a handful. God said, hold it, wait a minute. You go get your own dirt, amen. That's mine. Amen. God knows what's best for him. He says in verse number 18, I will not leave you com comfortless. Underline that word comfortless. You know what that means? Orphan. I'm not going to leave you like a little orphan. Someone who's been forsaken by their parents and nobody's there to help you. That's what he talks about here in this passage. The Greek word for comfortless is orphanos, which means orphans. Jesus said that he would not leave us orphans, but he would come in the person of the Holy Spirit of God and comfort us with the mighty power of God. When Jesus said, I will come to you, he meant it. Yeah. And when Jesus ascended up to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit down to this earth to believers so that we would know more about what he said. So the word comfortless carries the idea of orphans. We're not alone, friends. We're not abandoned. We're not helpless. We're not hopeless. Whatever we do and wherever we go, the Holy Spirit is with us. And we should never feel like an orphan. Thank God we're a child of the King. And He'll go with you every step of the way. Let's bow our heads in prayer and heads of our eyes are closed. We look today at the power of the Holy Spirit in our life. And the Lord sends the Holy Spirit down when we come to Christ and we're saved. Maybe today you'd say, well, I've never been saved. If that's the case and you'd like to know the Lord, you can ask him into your heart. You can pray something like this. Dear Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. Forgive me of my sin. Save my soul. And Lord, make me a home in heaven. Thank you for dying in my place on that old rugged cross. Help me just to live for you. And if you made that decision, I just want to pray for you. I'm not going to embarrass anyone to stand you up. But if you ask Christ in your heart to be your Savior, and you'd like for the preacher to pray for you today, I'd be glad to pray for you. Anyone like that, you'd slip your hand up or look up at me. God bless you. Thank you for that. Amen. 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 Maybe today you'd say, I know the Lord, and I'm so glad I'm saved. And I've got a burden on my heart. And I've got some unrest in my soul. I need his touch today. Just be my prayer partner. Pray with me, preacher. I'd be glad to. Anyone like that, you slip a hand up. The Lord knows the need and the burden of your heart. Hands are lifted everywhere. Father, we come today and just pray that you'll bless each one, Lord, in this congregation. Lord, those that raised a hand to be saved, the Lord, let them know they made the right decision. And I pray that God, you'll be with them in a wonderful way. And those who made that decision, Lord, to seek your will. And maybe some just need a, just a touch of encouragement. God, we ask that you'll be with the people, everyone here today, and especially those that had a hand lifted for whatever reason. 
Lord, thank you so much that we're not orphans, that we're children of the King. And we give you the praise for it. And when we have seen you, we have seen the Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Stand our feet while heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Charles can play softly while he does. Maybe you want to come around the altar and pray. You feel free to come. Maybe you just want to come down and say, Lord, I've got a burden. I've got something on my heart I need your strength for. I need your help. He'll be here to give you that power. He'll be here for you to pray. Answer your prayers. That's the intercessory prayer order. If you've been saved, you want to make that public, you come. If you want to come and join, you come. Whatever the Lord leads you to do. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Christians are praying. You come. Ye who are weary, come to the Lord. He'll give you rest. He'll give you strength. He'll give you comfort. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Softly and tenderly, Jesus is coming. Calling for you, calling for me. Oh, yes. Don't reject that call. Come to him today. Seek his will. Seek his touch. Whatever it is, he'll be there to help. He'll be there to give strength. He'll be there to give encouragement. Yes. Amen. you're glad you have a Savior like that that gives you the power of the Holy Spirit of God, never leads you, never forsakes you. Let's give him a big amen together. Ready? Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Hope you have a great day. Come back tonight at 6 if you will. We'd love to have you. Brother Keith, you dismiss us in prayer. After he does, tell somebody you love them. Good to see him at church today. Brother Keith. Most kind and gracious Father, we come to you in the blessed name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving Amen. Thank you for Calvary. Yes, Lord, we went on the cross and shed that blood for our sins. Amen. Thank you for making way to the Father. Yes. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for the rain you sent every day. Lord, we pray you just keep us all safe and healthy, Lord Jesus. Lord, have us be a witness for you, Lord Jesus. Come out to this lost and dying world. Lord, hear you through us and see you through us, Lord. Lord, we want to be sure to thank you trials and storms we go through. We know that you're right there with us. Holding our hand, Lord. Put your hand upon us. Thanks for that, though, Lord. Lord, we want to pray and just thank you for all that you do and all you're doing and all you're going to do. Which in Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.